Let's all stand. First two songs.
I 
for being all that we need. God, we thank you that in the storms of this life, God, that you are our deliverer, Lord, and that you are in control completely. Lord, would we surrender ourselves to you, to your will, God. May your Holy Spirit be in this place with us, God. And Lord, we thank you for the privilege we have to worship you, Lord, freely and with our family, Lord, with, with those of the church here, Lord, the body of Christ. Lord, would you be honored in everything this morning, Lord? Would we hear from you, speak through Pastor Joe? God, change us, make us more like you. And as we just continue now to worship you, Lord, would um, God just change us? Take all that we are, Lord. Make us more like you. In your name, amen. You may be seated. on my knees again surrendering all surrendering all find me here Lord as you draw me near desperate for you
nothing greater than being a child of God, saved, redeemed, forgiven, and loved, and Lord, and then to watch you work in our lives, molding us and shaping us and transforming us, God, into the very image of Jesus Christ. Oh, it's a lifetime work. And Lord, there's a lot of chipping and chiseling that's got to go on, sanding and grinding and, oh, but God, to know you're working in our lives, there is nothing greater. And we worship you this morning and we ask these things in Jesus' name we pray, amen. You know what? I'm going to ask you guys to do something that we haven't done in a long time. We're not going to get out of our seats. I just want you to turn around. And tell the people behind you that Jesus loves them. Jesus loves you. <laughs> oh. All right, don't get out of control now. <laughs> oh, my goodness. You give them an inch and they take a mile. All right. Got to love it. There's something about fellowshipping, isn't there? 
We miss it. You know, those of you that are here for the first time, we welcome you. We're glad you're here, that you've joined us this morning. Those that have been here a while before the COVID thing hit, we would literally, after worship, we would literally get out of our seats. And these folks here, if you're new here this morning, they would get out of their seats. And I would have to get ropes to round them up to get them back into their seats. They're hugging people and loving on people. I mean, it's just, it's, it's, there's just something really special and powerful about that. So, um, wow, we miss all that, don't we? Um, so anyway, we'll break into it slowly. How about that? Well... I've got to say something um, to all y'all. Last night was the most incredible night. Yeah, yeah, it was. It was an incredible night. Um, you know, me and my wife, um, we, we've been praying and saying, you know, with all the things going on with the Hurricane Sally, and then, you know, Zeta comes through, and we've had Calvary Relief teams coming every week for the last five, six weeks. You know, we've been feeding them, you know, at our house. We've been housing them and, you know, at different people's homes here in the church. And, and we, we've just been going and going and going for the past five, six weeks. And, and October 31st is on the way. And October 31st, for the last eight years, Calvary Chapel Fellowship of Foley has done a carnival out in this parking lot. And the community here expects us to do it, you know? I mean, so here we are completely taggered and ragged and, you know, just with everything that's going on. And I looked at my wife and go, we got to do the 31st. And she goes, how are we going to do that? How are we going to do that? Everybody's just worn out, tired. I said, I, you know what? I don't know what God knows. And God, this we're all about this community. And so we announced, you know, why don't, you know, instead of, the church making booths. I just said, you know, you guys, you guys make your booths and bring your cars out to the new church parking lot, the new church property, and where we're building the new church. And I said, just you know, we'll we'll get it all set up. We we got enough hot dogs for about 340 people. We got candy, so much candy, it's, it's unbelievable. And we didn't have a cakewalk because how are we going to do that in the dirt and all, everything else, you know? So we didn't have a cakewalk. I didn't get the jumpy houses this year, but we. Had a hayride. And and I got to tell you something. Everybody that's, if you're new here this morning, you're just going to hear something about these folks that are here in this church. Every single one of you in this church were a part of last night. Okay, I want to tell you that. Those of you that are, you know, you weren't there last night, you know, but every single person was a part of last night. How, why do you say that? Because you know what? You're pra- you were praying for it. You, you've contributed with your tithes and offerings towards it, and, and everybody was a part of it. And it was the biggest harvest outreach we've ever had in eight years. Yeah, the biggest. And we just put it on our Facebook. And I cannot tell you, just everybody that pitched in and cleaned the property and got everything ready to go and setting it all up to, to a whole different crew, tearing it down last night, on believable uh, amount of energy and work and just um, it was it was just incredible and I got to talk to so many people in our community um, w- w- I had people thanking us thanking you for just having something where kids could be kids everything was I mean I don't think there was too many things some kids were going through the neighborhoods absolutely but most places, it was a drive through trick-or-treat. The kids had to drive through, you know, and I don't know about you, but I'd be a kid in my costume sitting in a car going, what is this? You know, I would want, I'd be crawling out the windows. I'd probably get spanked, and I was grounded for a month. You know, I know myself as a kid. So kids, to, you know, when we had it out here, we had all the yellow tape. You know, the parents are really cautious with their children because, you know, if they get past the yellow tape, well, they're in a parking lot. You know, last night, it was so cool to watch as they came on the property, the safe zone, and I just saw parents, you know, oh, there's coffee, there's hot cocoa, you know, oh, oh my gosh, they're doing s'mores in a, in a fire pit. What? There's a hayride. And it was just like, parents were like, all right, go have fun, <laughs> you know, 
Kids were running around. Kids had a blast, and it was just um, kid. It was just amazing <coughs> to see that. And so I just want to say thanks to everyone for for allowing this to happen. We blessed our community, and um, it was it was just an incredible, uh, incredible event. So mm -hmm. praise the Lord, praise the Lord. You guys did you guys did amazing. Um, with that being said, we uh, we have. The whole church is painted inside. The new church is painted inside. Um, the stage is almost built. Um, the building is sound booth today. Um, there we have uh, drop ceilings are going to be done probably Monday. We have, um, this is what you need to pray for. You need to pray for that we get power to the building. We need power to the building with all the hurricanes. It's just been really difficult to get power to the building. Um and so pray that we get power to the building next week so that way our, our AC people can be done and our electrician can be done. And then the last thing that will be done is the site work, the paving of the parking lot and all that stuff um, can be finished. And so I am praying, um, and there is a story to this. I'm praying that we have our first service over there um, Christmas Eve, okay? Oh, yeah. <laughs> And those of you that are familiar with what's been transpired, when we got here in 09 in August and in October, uh, the Lord said, get Alan's barn ready for Christmas Eve. You're going to have your first, you're going to have Christmas Eve service in Alan's barn. And everybody laughed at me because your barn was a mess. <laughs> you know, it was, and it was like, how are we going to do this? And so, but you know what? Christmas Eve, we had our first service um, in the barn. Uh, on Christmas Eve in 2009, we were meeting in Allen and Lori's house when we first got here with 12 people and 12 kids. It seemed like huh? we had more kids than adults. Um, people just had tons of kids. Um, and then we moved into the barn and, and went through that summer. Um, 50 something people. We couldn't meet at the barn anymore. And, and that's a whole another story. And we moved to the shopping center. And now we're moving out of the shopping center and we're going to be moving to our our. Um, church property. Um, we have 15 acres out there. And I'll tell you what, um, to see Mr. Parker out there with that hayride last night, I thought for sure he'd be coming in like this today. You know, I mean, I, that hayride was going all night long, starting at 5 o'clock. It was just going all night long. So pray that power gets to the building. Um, pray that it uh, that happens. So what's coming up next? Well, ladies, I'm going to tell you. Let me talk to you ladies first. You have a ladies Christmas event coming up December 18th, okay? And uh, my wife is praying that we get the church building done by December 18th because she wants to have the ladies event at the new church. And if that happens, that happens. Great. We'll do it. But if not, we're going to we'll, we'll take all we take all these chairs out of the sanctuary and the ladies they deck this thing out in here. You would never know it was a sanctuary. It's a beautiful thing, but it's it's limited space. So we will start sign-ups next week for the ladies' event. It's $25 to go. Um, that just covers all the food and all the goodies and all the things that you that the ladies do. And so they're really good at what they do. So um, anyway, so the sign-ups will start next week. Um, those of you ladies that might be saying, oh, gosh, $25. You know what? See my wife after service. If God wants you to go, God will provide. He always does. So, um, so ladies Christmas events coming up uh, in December. Um, and we're doing something this year that is bigger than ever because of all the hurricane stuff. Well, we've been feeding the seniors of Foley for the last, I don't know, seven, eight years at the Foley Senior Center. The, our church, we provide you know, we the guys deep fry the turkeys and all the people make all the, the fixings and we serve the, the seniors in Foley and everything else. Well, this year, because of everything that's been going on, the city of Foley, we're going to do it at the Civic Center. Uh, so this is going to be big. Uh, we have a team coming from our home church uh, in Moreno Valley, California. They're going to come with 17 people uh, to help us because we're probably going to be doing over 600 meals. Uh, we're going to be, uh, we'll, we'll set up the senior center with the city of Foley and we will, we will decorate the tables, the seniors or whoever comes from the community, whoever comes from the community will be eat. they'll be able to eat social distance, you know, stuff. They'll be able to eat in the civic center. 
we'll have a uh, we'll actually have a drive-through out in front of the Civic Center, so people can get you know if they're a family of five, they get five meals and they take them home. You know if they have family eight, they take eight meals home. Um, we will feed South Baldwin Hospital. We always do all the workers that are working on Thanksgiving. We do this on Thanksgiving. Um, my our family tradition for the last eleven years is we have our family Thanksgiving on Friday, because we are serving on Thursday. We're serving our community, so um, we'll be feeding South Baldwin Hospital. We'll be feeding Diversity Care, um, all the workers there, and that's just what we do. And the City of Foley, uh, Pam Harris, who who oversees the Civic Center and all that, her family always takes the meals um, to the Meals on Wheels folks because Meals on Wheels don't serve on Thanksgiving Day. So we will take, um, she or her family will take all the meals to all the shut-ins in Foley. So it's a big operation, takes a lot of people. So what we're gonna do this year is, um, starting next week, we'll have a sign up um, for different items, um, for potatoes and sweet potatoes and you know all the fixings for a, Chris, uh, a Thanksgiving um, meal. So we'll probably be doing about 35 turkeys this year. We're, we're figuring on 35 turkeys. That's a lot of turkeys. Uh, yeah, we usually do like 15, so this is a double deal. So, um, wow, it's going to be it's gonna be a blast. I can't wait. Um, so, a lot of fun. So anyway, that's coming up as well. So a lot of things happening, a lot of things going on. You know, we just don't stop serving, you know, when disasters hit. We don't, we don't stop doing what God's called us to do. And um, I was sharing with a gentleman this morning, it just seems that God always brings the right people at the right moment. He always brings the people. I mean, it's amazing for me to see as a pastor how the body of Christ, the family, because we're all family here. And if you're new here, welcome to the family. <laughs> we're a family. So, you know, it's just amazing to me to see how the family just rises up and and uh, it, it's just it's just cool um to watch so um awesome stuff so um let's open our bibles to the second letter of john that's where we're going to be this morning as john talks about the faithful family who needs a bible raise your hand we'll get you a bible we have bibles anybody need one okay all right we're going to be in um second john second letter of john and there's 13 verses in the second letter. There's 14 verses in the third letter. So, and then after third John comes the book of Jude. And a nice short little book. And I'm praying about whether to, we've done the book of Revelation, by the way. But you can, if you go on our website, you can, you can hear the whole series. I've done the book of Revelation. I haven't done the book of Jude yet. Um, but if I do the book of Jude, then we pretty much, I've done the whole Old Testament, uh, the whole New Testament pretty much in 11 years, I think. Yeah, covered every book. Um, but anyway, I'm thinking of going to the book of Acts after after 3 John. Um, the book of Acts is a powerful, exciting book, um, what the first, the, the apostolic church was doing. Um, um, powerful, powerful stuff, because we're, we're living in the book of Acts right now. <laughs> we are living in the book of Acts, so it's really cool to see what the, the first church was doing, you know, when they were on fire and got saved, and um, it kind of really stirs our hearts. So John writes this wonderful letter here, and so let's read the first six verses, and um, we'll pray over it. Uh, mine has a title. It says, Greeting the Elect Lady, the Elder, to the elect lady and her children, whom I love in truth, and not only I but also all those who have known the truth. Because of the truth which abides in us and will be with us forever. Grace, mercy, and peace will be with you from God the Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the Father, in truth and love. I rejoice greatly that I have found some of your children walking in truth. And we received commandment from the Father. And now I plead with you, lady, not as though I wrote a new commandment to you, but that which we have had from the beginning, that we love one another. And this is love, that we walk 
according to his commandments. This is the commandment that as you have heard from the beginning, you should walk in it. Father God, we thank you so much for the scriptures, God, the Bible, your holy word. Yes, men wrote it, but they were inspired by you. You gave them every letter for every word, for everything that was supposed to be put in this Bible. And so, God, this morning, I pray that you would, um, your word would have a powerful effect upon our lives. I pray that every single day as I read your word, that it would have a powerful effect upon my life, a transforming effect. Lord, that your Holy Spirit would speak to us, that your Holy Spirit would instruct us, lead us, guide us, direct us, God. And Lord, and get us aligned with you. That's really what the word does. It aligns us with your heart and your will. So may you speak to us, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. So here we have this letter written by John. It probably was written maybe, um, it could have been written right after John wrote 1 John. It could have been um, written shortly after 1 John. But when John writes this, it, it says here, the title is The Elder. John was like in his 90s at this time. He was the last living apostle. All the other apostles have, have died and gone. And, and so there was a, a writer, a historian named Josephus. And he wasn't a Christian, but he was a Jew. And he, and he, and he wrote down history of the Jews and, and, and the Christians at that time of Christ. And he wrote that whenever you would, you know, you would go into the town um, or talk about the elder, that the, the Christian church knew exactly who you were talking about. You were talking about John, because John was the elder. He was in his 90s, and he probably passed on and went home to be with the Lord probably maybe a year or two years after he wrote Third John. John had seen a lot of things. John had experienced a lot of things. The Lord used him in mighty ways. And here he is writing these letters to, to the church. Now, there's been a lot of debate about who this letter is written to. Was it written to a woman, the elect lady? See, back in John's day, they didn't have buildings to meet in. They met in homes. That's how the church met. They, they met in homes. And they met in homes they went from one home on Monday, they went to another home on Tuesday, they went to another home. They were going to home seven days a week in different towns. So those of you that like want to be in the ministry, they were going all the time. <laughs> they were going all the time. You know, it's, do you have a Sunday night? Do you have a Wednesday night? You know, that these guys were like, we, we got church seven days a week. We're going and doing Bible studies. Um, so did he write to a lady and her children? Could be, possibly. Or, or is he referring to the elect lady, the church, the bride of Christ, the elect lady? We are. The church is the bride of Christ. And every time I say the bride of Christ, you know what flashes in my, in my, in my mind and I see something? I remember 32 years ago, my bride coming down that, coming down that aisle. And I'll tell you what, she's more beautiful today than she was back then 32 years ago. But I remember my bride and how beautiful she was and how ready she was. I mean, it, trust me, ladies, you know what I'm talking about. You know, when your wedding day comes, there is a lot to do, right? A lot to do. And my wife prepared herself for that day. And we're the church. And we are supposed to be preparing ourselves. For that day that we are reunited, if you will, with Christ. We're the bride of Christ, the elect lady. Now, when it says here her children, it, it could be referring to the church, the family of God. And personally, I'm really, you know what? Hey, that's interesting stuff. You can debate about it all you want, but it applies to both. And the message applies to all of us anyway. So whoever it's written to um, is just something you can, you know, you can, if you want to debate about it, go ahead. I got better things to do than to debate about God's word. So 
Um, so John here, um, <clears throat> whether it's the, whether it's the the family or or the church or our lady or the bride of Christ, there's a saying. Here's the saying. The saying goes like this: As goes the home, so goes the church, so goes the nation. You guys catch that? So goes the home, there goes the church, and there goes the nation. I'm going to tell you something. Satan has been attacking the family since day one, since Adam and Eve. And you look at what is happening in society today. You know, now we have the government defining what marriage is, right? We have, we have all this this nonsense going on and John when John wrote first John John was like listen it's all about loving God it's all about loving others and it's like loving the brethren but John writes in second John and his emphasis is on the truth because John already was seeing that the Christians were being deceived the the Christians were already getting pulled away from the truth they were already saying that no Jesus wasn't the Christ he wasn't the son of God. He was just, when, when he was baptized, the Christ, the spirit of the Christ came upon him. And then when he died on the cross, the spirit of Christ came off of him. He was just a man. That is not scriptural. That is what the Gnostics believed. It was nonsense. Okay? John is sitting here writing saying, listen, church, elect lady, your children, you better hold on to the truth. The truth. You notice in the verse, verses 1 and 2, truth, 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 three times. We've got to hold on to the truth. We have the government right now telling us what the truth is. Is it the truth? No. You have churches, churches telling you what the truth is. And they're not even telling you the truth. Just because you have an organization in mainstream denomination with pull around the world and it goes against God's word, does it make it true? No, it does not make it true. Only God's word makes it true. If we don't hold on to that, we're, we're going to lose it. I mean, even, even as parents, we raise our kids in the truth, right? So that way they can hold on to the truth because the reality is, moms and dads, when they become young adults, 17, 18 years of age, they're going to be out of the house and they're going to be making their own decisions. Some you will like, some you will dislike, some you're going to be appalled at. But if we don't balance our lives to give them the truth, then they're going to be lost in this world. They're going to be lost. So we got to give them the truth. John is all about the truth here <laughs> in this second letter. I, th I think about all the things that lie to us. My emotions and my flesh are the number one liars of all. My emotions and my flesh lie to me all the time. Um, I, 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 we let our feelings and emotions lie to us. We let the, the, we're, the, the Christian church is being lied to and deceived by the world. Our schools, our children are going to public schools. You know what? Not that there's nothing wrong with public school. Don't get me wrong. I went to public school. You know, my grandkids, some of them go to public school. You know what? But as parents... If I don't bring the truth in to help them in public school, they're going to be lost to the society and the teaching and all, on all the things that they're going to hear in school. If I don't intervene as a parent, you know, that's why some parents choose to homeschool. Some parents choose, you know what, I'm going to have to get an extra job and I'm going to send them to private school. You know, all those things are great and everything else. But there's really, like, there's really like no guarantee that your kids are going to walk in the ways of the Lord just because of certain choices that you make. What kind of truth are you pouring into their life? What kind of balance are you putting in there? What is the example that they're seeing? You know, um, So we, you know, 
I, I was talking to somebody after first service about abortion. You know, the, this whole cloak that, that society has on abortion. Listen, I get all that. You know, you think that if a mom's life is in danger, that they're going to just let the child be born and let the mom die? No, they're not going to do that. They're going to spare the mom. But they put all this cloak around the whole abortion issue to skirt the issue. To, 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 we're, gonna, we're doing exactly what the Old Testament, what they did, the Jews did. They killed their babies. They killed them by the millions and by the thousands. And God judged them. And we are, we are doing the same thing in, in the name of the law and b- because of the things that have been voted in. I mean, they're, they're lies, you know. Christians are saying, I'm a Christian. I believe in Jesus. Well then, well, then how can you vote for somebody that believes in abortion? You know they believe in abortion. You know they're going to kill babies. Yeah, but I don't know if the other side's really going to hold to it. I mean, what is that? What, is, what kind of reasoning is that? How can I do that? Then we, then we have the whole, you know, you know, this whole gender issue thing that's going on. Listen, we love, we, we are to love, John told us, we're to love the Lord our God with all of our heart, soul, and mind. We're to love others, and we need to love others. But do we love others and, and forget about the truth? Let the truth go by the wayside in the name of love. Listen, Jesus loves you so much that he loves you just the way you are. Just the way you are. But he loves you so much that he's not going to leave you the way you are. You don't, go, you don't go grab an alcoholic and say, dude, it's okay, man. Just be a drunk and accept Jesus and remain a drunk. Or a heroin addict or, or whatever. You don't just say, continue on, brother. Be a jerk. You know, do that to ruin your life. It's okay. Jesus loves you. No. No, that's not how it works. Jesus comes into our hearts. He comes into our lives. And he transforms us. He changes us. He takes the addictions. He takes the desires over time. And he does this transformation work. You're supposed to be a mirrored reflection of Christ. That's what I'm supposed to be, a mirrored reflection of Christ. So we have all these lies coming at us. The Christian church is confused. And a bunch of other denominations are confused. Do you think that just because the government says something, that's truth? What happens if it goes against God's word? Do we just accept it as fact? If a church tells you something do you just accept it as truth, or are you gonna or are you gonna ch- cross check it with this? Because if you don't cross check it with this, then you're you're gonna be responsible. You're gonna be responsible. There are laws being passed right now. You know this is all part of Satan's lie, folks. All part of Satan lie. The gender, the sex, the, all this stuff. It's all part of Satan's lie because now, listen, you you know it's about feelings. It's how you feel. And the poor person that just loves children, the pedophiler, come on, that's his choice. There's already laws being passed right now that if you're 10 years to 15 years older than the person, it's okay. California is one of them. And it's going to different states because they have feelings too and they have choices to make as well. You see the lie? The lie just continues to go and go. John says, you better know the truth. You know, John was the one, John was the one that was staring at truth. John was the one that was there when truth was speaking. John was there that day. I, I got to turn there. In John chapter 14. John chapter 14. John says, well, actually, Jesus said, and John was there. John saw, John heard, and John, John beheld the truth. And he says, and Jesus says, let not your heart be troubled. He tells them, you believe in God, believe also in me. Jesus is saying, you believe in God, believe also in me. Listen, I'm telling you. He says, in my father's house are many mansions. 
And if it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go prepare a place for you, I will come again. He's coming again. And to receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And where I go, you know. And the way, you know. And But most of us are like Thomas. <laughs> Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. And how can we know the way? And Jesus says, and John was there. John saw Jesus, he said to Thomas, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. There's no other way, folks. There's no other way. Jesus is the truth. He is the way, the truth, and the life. And then he says, no one comes to the Father except through me. No one else. You can't put anybody in there. No one comes to the Father except through me. You've got to go through Jesus. Wow. Incredible. In Deuteronomy, in chapter 32, verse 4, it says, he is the rock, speaking of God. His work is perfect, and for all his ways are justice, and God, a God of truth, and without injustice. God doesn't do anything unjust or unjust. He's just. He's a God of truth. Truth. Righteous and upright is he. Um, Joshua, chapter 24, verse 14. It says, Joshua, now therefore, fear the Lord, serve him in sincerity and in truth, and put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the river and in Egypt. Serve the Lord. The entirety, Psalm 119, 160, the entirety of your word is truth <laughs> the entirety all of it old testament new testament it's all truth what does the world say today this was written a long time ago <laughs> get the dust off it it doesn't apply today that we're living in different times this book is applied for every generation for every point in time <laughs> I love it. Your word is truth, the entirety. And every one of your righteous judgments endures forever. And then when John wrote in John chapter 17, verse 17, when Jesus was praying for us as believers, he, this is what Jesus said. And he was praying to the Father. And he said, and he was praying. I mean, he's, he's going he's gonna to ascend. He's going to be gone. He's leaving the 12 in charge. In the power of the Holy Spirit. It's kind of funny, isn't it? Like leaving us in charge, right? I do that all the time. Lord, I don't even know why you picked me. Why, why did you pick me? I don't even get it. I don't even understand it. My wife says, I don't either. <laughs> but, he, but you know what? Well, then I know the scripture. What does the scripture say? God chooses the foolish things to confound the wise. I'm number one, right? So John 17, 17, Jesus prays and he says, sanctify them. What's sanctify mean? Sanctify means set apart. Set them apart, Lord. Well, how is the Lord going to set them apart? He says, sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. You see, do you wonder why the devil doesn't want you to read this book? Because if you do, you'll know the truth. What you're doing, is it wrong or is it right? Is it compromise? Is it not? Is God agree with it or does he not? Is, is, it, is it sin or is it not? It, it, that's how it is. It's truth. 
What is, what is that law? What's the government passing in that law? What does that law read? What does God's law say? Well, that goes against God's law. Huh. Well, I guess I, guess I better not pay attention to that then. You know? I guess I better not believe in that then. That's not, that's not biblical. God's word is truth. It will always be the truth. And it will never change from the truth. <laughs> it will always be truth. No matter what an organization says, no matter how big they are or the influence they may have, in the world, it does not matter if they if it's if they're if it's not biblical and it's not scriptural, then it's not the truth. If the government passes laws in our lands that go against scripture, then it's not biblical. Does, it doesn't, it's not true. That's a law, but it, it doesn't go along with God's word. I don't know how long it's going to be before, you know, who knows? We live in a blessed state, the state of Alabama. God-fearing state, God-fearing people. I'm sure there's some in government that aren't God-fearing people, but we have laws here, and you know what? We're opening our Bibles. We're, we're meeting as, as a church, and there's a lot of states right now. They cannot meet. They cannot meet as a church. As a matter of fact, they're going to tell you how many people can be at your Thanksgiving feast. They're going to tell you how many people can be at your, your, at your Christmas dinner with your family because your whole family can't be there. They're, they're, they're passing. Da, 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 da. Somebody was telling me first service about the, the big uh, Jewish gathering of, of Jewish Christians. They were meeting in a home in, in New York, and somebody told on them, and the police came in and broke up, but you cannot meet. Can't meet. And they're also saying, listen, and you can't sing in your homes. You can't, you can't, you can't, you can't do that. You can't. What, what is this? You, there are, there are people in our government and there are business people, billionaires who are socialists and they want to destroy our democracy. And if we don't wake up, listen, Tuesday's a big day. Either way, either way, Tuesday, is there's going to be a change in our society and in our world on Tuesday. Either way. Either way. But big, big changes are coming. And if we don't know the truth of this book, we're in trouble. The church is in trouble. Christians, Christians are already in trouble. I, so many people make so many decisions, and they're, they say they're followers of Christ. And, and it really boggles my mind. It really does. You're a follower of Christ. You're a lover of God. And you're continuing to do what? You're continuing to live like what? How? You're talking to an ex-drug addict. You're talking to an ex-alcoholic. You're talking to somebody who walked in the world for 28 years and got saved. How? I, God is completely taking that taste and taking that lifestyle and all that, that, that stuff, the lies from the pit of hell because Satan wants to ruin our lives. John says, you better hold on to the truth. You better love the truth. And the truth will abide with us forever. And he says, grace, mercy, and peace will be with you from God, the Father, and from the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the Father, in truth and in love. Man, God, I didn't find peace until I found Christ. I didn't understand mercy until I, I had a relationship with God. Because when you figure out what mercy is all about, mercy is not getting what you do deserve. That's mercy. Not getting what you do deserve. And when I, when I look at my life and go, what? I know what I deserved. 
And, and, and now all of a sudden I understand what mercy is. But you know what? The Bible says while we were yet enemies with God, that he died on the cross. Jesus died on the cross for our sins. While I was yet an enemy of God. And now I'm a child of God? Man, that, I, I got peace with God. I have no, me and God are like this. We're like this, not because of anything that I'm doing, but because what he's done. There isn't anything good that I could do to bring this in our lives. Amen. Everything that Jesus did brought this in our lives. The blood of Christ. We're going to have communion this morning, and Pastor Mike is going to share with us the communion message this morning. But John writes here and says, listen, the, the, the grace of God and the mercy of God and the peace of God will be with you from God. In the midst of, of lies, in the midst of the deception, in the midst of this, we all got to live in this world. We all got to truck our way through, you know. And it's not easy. It's not easy. It's not easy at all. But God says, I'll give you the Holy Spirit to give you the power and the ability to do it. You know, it's interesting. I have coffee in here. And it's good coffee. Alan made it. We call it camp coffee. It's strong. But you know, this coffee cup, if, if, I, if, I, if I take my empty coffee cup and I go set it on the coffee table, and I go look, and I look at the coffee pot and go, hey, coffee pot, come on, fill my cup. Come on, coffee pot. Stupid coffee pot. Right? I have to take my coffee cup i got to walk over to that little spigot thing, and i got to turn it on, and guess what happens? Guess what happens? Coffee comes out. Coffee comes out, and coffee fills my cup. And I go, whoa, my, look at that. Mm. It's so good. Listen, we think that we can live the Christian life without being filled with the Spirit. I've got, to, I've got to put myself under the spigot of the Holy Spirit or I'm never going to get filled. I'm just going to be this empty cup. I've got to put myself there. I've got to put my cup under the coffee pot to fill it up. And, you know, you look around and you go, why is this Christian all on fire for the Lord? And why is this person all excited? And why, you know, they're putting themselves under the spigot. They're, and they're, they're serving and they're, and they're being used by God. And, and, and it's like, why can't that happen to me? Well, get under the spigot. You know? You know, go to the men's study. Go to the ladies' study. Go, come to midweek. You know, come to, you know, whatever we got going on. Get, get under the spigot. I, I tell you what, there's nothing greater, there's nothing more exciting than being used by God. Nothing greater, nothing more exciting than being used by God. It's the most incredible thing in the world. Incredible. You know, and you look at these verses and go, the truth and the truth and the truth. And, you know, grace and mercy and peace. Oh, the beloved church, the elect lady. You know, you look at those things and you go, who, what? <laughs> I read those things and I go, man, I am elect. I am chosen by God. I am his special. I'm his child. He loves me. I can walk through this life in the midst of disaster, and I can have peace. And I know the grace of God. Grace is what? Getting what you don't deserve. Grace is getting what you don't deserve. I get heaven. I get a relationship with God. That's better than a relationship with the president of the United States because he's never going to call me up. Right? Bradley Byrne isn't going to call me up. You know, whoever you want, whoever politician you want to name, they're not going to call me up. God calls me up, and I talk to him every day. And he gives me my marching orders every day. There is nothing greater and more exciting than that. I mean, you, but you got to get under the spigot. You know, I, or else you read these things and you go, what is this? To the elect lady. Who's she? You know? The Queen of Foley, we got to meet her, by the way. The Queen of Foley, did you guys know there's the Queen of Foley? Yes. We cleaned her whole, all of her rubbish from the storm. She says, y'all know me, don't you? We all said, no, we don't. 
<laughs> she says, I'm the queen of Foley. And I'm like, whoa, looky there. You know, she's the queen of Foley. You know, wow. You know. You know, who's this elect lady? The church. The church. You're the church of Jesus Christ. Well, how, how, what more do you want? And John writes to her, her children. John says, whom I love. In the truth. In the truth. And the truth is, it doesn't matter what color you are. It doesn't matter what race you are. It doesn't matter how rich you are. It doesn't matter how poor you are. It doesn't matter what your problems are. We all have problems and we all have issues and none of us are perfect. But I can love all y'all. <laughs> we can love each other. This is what John's talking about. Ooh, I let's the truth. The truth is God loves everybody, right? He loves everybody. And, and that's how you know those who know the truth. That's how you know those who know the truth. They, they, they left love for others, love for people. And so John just opens up this incredible letter of 13 verses with some very powerful, powerful verses. And I want to just, before Pastor Mike comes up here and shares the communion message, hold on to the truth. Hold on to the truth. Don't let go of it. And we, we got to be careful who we align ourselves with, folks. I feel sorry for, the, for a, a bunch of people in the world, denominations, that are holding on to something. They can't even let go of it because they're, they're, they're so bound to it. They're so bound to it. They can't even like, and they know that that whole organization is marching in the path of Satan. And they can't even let go. It's, it's a sad thing to see. And so many people are, are, are lost in that. Uh, we need to pray for them. We need to pray they get saved. Um, and so this morning, if you're new here, we invite you to partake of communion with us. Um, the Bible says there's only one thing that, you, you know, don't partake of communion if you're not saved, okay? If you're not saved, then don't take of communion. If you don't have a repentant heart, don't take communion because it says that you're passing judgment onto yourself. So you can cure both of those this morning and be able to partake communion with us this morning by one, when communion is being passed out, when we're all praying, you just bow your head and say, Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. I give you my life. I believe you died on the cross for my sins. I'm a sinner. I know it. I receive your, your forgiveness. I, be, I, I, I believe in you, Lord. Forgive me. And, and I want to be born again. And then, guess what? You can, partake of, you can partake of communion. So, there should be no reason why anybody in here would not be partaking of com communion. And, and because there isn't any sin in here that God can't forgive. Okay? So, Pastor Mike. <clears throat> well, I think if you're truly elect, you should be saved.
Jesus, lover of my soul, Jesus, I will never let you go, you've taken me up from the miry clay, set my feet upon the rock, now I My world may fall, I will never let you go. My Savior, my closest friend, I will worship you until the very end. Jesus, lover of my soul, Jesus. I will never let you go.
That's Mike's. <laughs> I pray each of you have a blessed week. Get under the spigot. Let the Holy Spirit fill you, use you. You'll be amazed. Amen? All right. Trembles at your word. My feet dance to your praise. My heart trembles at your word. My feet dance to your praise.
God, we thank you for speaking to us this morning. Lord, fill us with your spirit. Give your church, give us, Lord, all the power we need to make it through the day, Lord. And would we be bowing down our lives to you and all that we say and all that we do, Lord. We love you so much. Thank you again for allowing us to meet here. In your name, amen.